Hello and welcome back. Um, so this video we are going to actually cut this with Gwen, my CNC router. Uh, we're going to first of first of all we're going to do a roughing cut with a six millimeter ball mill. Uh, then we're going to do a finishing cut with a three millimeter ball mill, and we'll see what sort of job it turns out and um, if it's not quite crisp enough we'll put a 1.5 millimeter ball mill uh, through the same job to bring the clarity of it up um, and I'm going to answer some of your questions as well during this uh, video first question I'm going to answer regarding ATCAM the new ATCAM standard uh, a lot of people are writing in asking me what happens at the end of the first year of subscription paying for your 12 months prescription does it stop operating well yes it does because what uh, the, the, what the arrangement is you pay a yearly subscription and the way I think about it is well most programs that are as powerful or maybe not quite as powerful as at cam standard um, require you to pay seven or eight or even a thousand dollars up front um, to purchase the program uh, so I believe that at, what at cam has done or Autodesk um, is enabled ordinary guys to be able to afford a very powerful program and pay by installments now uh, I'm not quite sure what happens at the end of three years because on their website they only say year one two and three so whether they're going to bring a new program out or whether you own it at the end of that I'm not quite sure um, so anyway, there's the answer to your, your, the first big question that's asked. Uh, yes, you, you need to um, repay your prescription annually to Autodesk or ATCAM for the use of this program. And I, I'll just state again, if you was to purchase a program as powerful as this ATCAM standard You'd be paying nearly a thousand dollars up front first. Question number two most asked. Um, now, I completed the roughing uh, with the six mil two flute ball mill, and uh, the machine has come to the zero zero position, which is in the center of our piece of work. And last night I switched the computer off and the machine off in that position. And the question is, or the question I'm going to answer, because now I've machined this away, this material away, um, how do I change the tool and find the zero point of the material again? Uh, because it's, it's 19 mil above this. Well, it's very easily done, actually, and I will take you through the procedure. And uh, I just get a little bit of waste material of the same material and put on there. Um, bring the uh, change the tool, bring the 
head over here and just zero off this material block. It's as easy as that. And we'll do that right now. Okay, so you can see here that the x0, y0, we're at the zero position which we set before we started the uh, work. They haven't changed. Uh, the tool has come to rest 16, 16 and a half millimeters above the zero pos position of the, the original piece of work that's now machined away. Uh, so you can see now in relation to my table, the zero, zero position uh, of the work. So now we're going to change a tool and reset the Z position. Okay, so now we're going to bring um, the... Oh, maybe we're not. There we can. So now we're going to bring the tool forward. That'll do. Okay, alter the jog now to half millimeter, take it down a bit closer. Oh, actually, we can go to point one of a millimeter. Just put that there. So, all you're doing is just moving the paper and bring the tool down quietly, very quietly. Just grabbing it there, just see. And then you set the zero in NC Studio. Like this. So you can see it's a very simple operation to change a tool because you're not altering the X and Y at all. You don't touch it. Um, so all you're doing is altering the, the the Z height or finding the new Z height for the tool that you're putting in. And all you need is a, a small piece of the waste material that uh, you've been using as your material that you've been cutting and put on the same plane as that piece of material as indeed I have just done. So, so now we can, I think, if I alter the jog setting, the full time jog, lift the tool up to a safe distance, remove that. We can now, I'll, I'll just take it back to a roughly the, uh, actually, I don't have to, I'll show you because. Uh, the, the computer knows exactly where this head is now, so I could actually start the program up right here uh, and it will travel back to the zero position, register that zero position, then come to the front here, come down quietly and come back and forth and start to machine the finishing um, toolpath. So we'll do that right now. So now I know everything is going just fine, uh, it's cutting where it should do. Uh, I now speed the feed rate up to, um, we say, a more sensible rate.
I hope that you liked the making of this knight's shield on a CNC router and uh, please if you did subscribe to my channel press like little red box in the bottom corner down there if you press that that'll take you to my YouTube channel where there's now 171 videos ranging from CNC machining with a CNC router to wood turning different shop jobs I do around here at cam um, Mark 3 SE studio um, oh the list goes on um, bit, of, bit of furniture making and uh, I think there's something there for uh, everybody so um, until next time thank you for watching and bye for now mm -hmm.